What is going on today guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jay and if this is your first time to the channel, I'm sorry. Today we're going to take a close look, a second look, at my Harley Benton SC552. <laughs> I purchased this guitar nearly two years ago now and I did demo it on the channel back then and in the video I stated that I really enjoy the guitar you know I'm gonna keep it I like it a lot and that I would intend to use it much more frequently on the channel going forward you know first world problems right too many guitars too much gear too little time I did intend to play it more often I just didn't get to it because I'm more of a super strat guy you know I like the pointy sharp modern guitars whatever but every once in a while, I do want to play something that's got more of that vintage vibe. Kind of get that 60s, 70s, and 80s feel. Uh, and this does it really well. <laughs> So I'm going to go over a few specs on the guitar and uh, discuss a little more in depth some of the points of contention, basically you could say. So first of all, let's start out with the good stuff, but there are a couple of things I'm going to mention later on in the video that, you know, they might deter you from buying the guitar, I don't know, but at least you want to be conscious of them going into the purchase, right? You just want to be well informed. You want to know as much as you can about it. So first, some of the finer points of this build, uh, mahogany body, mahogany neck, it's got a great balance, great feel to it. It's got some heft, you know, it weighs a little over eight and a half pounds and uh, it stays in tune really, really well. And I think that's due in large part to the fact that this neck is just so solid. It's It's got a thick feel to it. It's not so thick that it's like a baseball bat, but it's definitely not wizard neck thin either, you know. And the way that the neck is set into the body, I think is actually nicer than how Gibson does it, honestly. It's more comfortable, uh, easier access in my opinion. But, you know, to each his own. I'm not here really to nitpick against, you know, compare it to a Gibson. But, you know, how can you not really? Because, I mean, after all, it is basically a Les Paul shape. So it's going to have a lot of similarities. <laughs> So Harley Benton builds guitars, if you're not familiar with them, that are more budget friendly, I would say, right? That's, you know, they're cheaper, but they're not cheap. So if this is something for you, like let's say it's your first instrument or you're buying an instrument for your kid who's going to start taking guitar lessons, or you just want something that you don't have to worry about getting banged up at the bar when you're playing your gigs on the weekend, you know, at the local corner bar, what have you, this is the way to go, right? So when I purchased this, um, it was about somewhere around $350, give or take, and I think shipping as well. But, you know, they might be a little higher now since you know, inflation. But yeah, for that price point, you might not expect to have some of the specs that come on this guitar. I really was surprised, and I really still am. I mean, this thing, it's quality, man, just all around. So let's go over some of the finer points. Uh, first off, stainless steel frets. I will preach about this until I'm blue in the face, until my last days. Stainless steel frets, guys, they feel smoother, they last forever, they just glide so much nicer, they don't get gritty and corrosive, at least not in the way that nickel frets do. Uh, they don't need to be leveled and replaced, you know, every couple of years, because the less maintenance you have to do on your instruments, the better, just overall. Plus, it just feels so good to play. I mean, trust me, when you've played stainless steel, you will not go back. Okay, what else do we have? So the hardware, uh, specifically the tailpiece and the bridge on this thing, solid pieces of metal. I don't know what kind of metal they are, but they have some heft to them. They've got some weight. They don't feel like cheap, chintzy, 
um, you know, die cast aluminum or whatever. They're not lightweight. And when you turn the screws, you know, to move them up and down, they're very precise. You know, there's no jiggle wiggle. There's no crackliness or funniness about them. They just feel like they're rock solid pieces of equipment. So in my opinion, there's really no reason to replace uh, the bridge or the tailpiece. You can, I mean, you know how guys are. You want to hot rod everything. You want to throw in some aftermarket performance parts, just like a car. I get it. It's a lot of fun to do, but I feel like in this regard, it's probably just a waste of money. These work very well. The tuning is great. The resonance is great. The sustain is really great with this instrument. I mean, it really holds a note very long. I do not see a reason to replace those parts. Let's talk about the uh, the pots, right? The volume and the tone knobs. They turn smoothly. Smoothly. With precision, but they've got a little bit of friction. So they're not just gonna get accidentally bumped out of place. They work very well. I haven't bothered to remove the back plate to check out to see actually what brand pots they are, but I should because they're really good and I would like to put them in other guitars. Work great. Uh, the three-way selector switch, very precise. You put it where you want and it stays there, right? Works flawlessly, I love it. Now the fit and finish of this guitar, it's, I honestly, you know, they don't know me from Adam, so they don't know who I am, so I can, I can tell you whatever I want about this guitar, right? Honestly, it's just immaculate. It's practically a 10 out of 10. And being that it's a budget-friendly instrument, you would expect to see some minor flaws here and there, right? Just surface things. There's nothing wrong with this thing. It's amazing. So, I mean, $350 and you're getting something as gorgeous as this instrument. And it plays well. It feels good. There's nothing funny about it. <laughs> There's no fret spout, sprout whatsoever. And the nut, let's talk about the nut for a minute too. So, Graftech nut, right? This one, again, the fit and finish is perfect. It's flush on all sides. All the corners have been filed smoothly so that there's no sharp jagged edges to cut you with or hit your hand when you're up in the first position. It feels great. Um, the slots, they're at the proper angle. You know, both towards the tuning pegs and the proper angle that they're supposed to seat, seat the string so that it doesn't buzz, you know, do anything weird or get bound up in the nut. So whoever did that nut or however that was made, perfect. Okay, so now a couple of the points I wanted to discuss that you know to help you make a more informed decision as to whether or not you're going to pull the trigger and get this guitar uh the tuning pegs the tuning machines rather subpar they, they had to cut corners somewhere and i hate to use that phrase i mean it's they're not really cutting corners so much as they had to make compromise somehow right they're a manufacturer they're in business to make money so they've got to somehow some way figure out a way to build an instrument at that low price point but still make money they got to skimp on something so in this case, it was the tuners. Definitely subpar. I'm, I hate to say it, but they just didn't work well. You know, you, it, they're like those tuners where you just start to get it. It's nearly in tune. You're going real slow, trying to be very precise, and then bang, it's sharp. And you got to go backwards and start all over again. Uh, so I had to get rid of those. I basically just threw them in the garbage. They were junk. I replaced them with Klusen Revolution locking tuners, which have a gear ratio of 19 to 1. Now, if you are unfamiliar with the gear ratio, you know, when you're looking at tuners, the higher that number, the more precise the tuner is, the more accurately you can get it in tune and much quicker because that means it takes that much more revolutions to make one complete cycle. The higher that number, the better it is. These are 19 to 1. Uh, I have never seen anything higher than 21 to 1. So, I mean, this is right up there. And if you're not somebody who wants, you know, locking tuners because you want to keep the vibe and the aesthetic of a vintage instrument, you know, th those are locking tuners. But if you don't want that, you can still get Clusens or any other reputable, you know, brand. Shaler, uh, you've got Fender, you've got Grovers, you've got Goto, all different brands. They all make something similar. They'll all be better than what was on here from the factory. And you should consider that absolutely if you're going to buy this guitar. You're going to spend an extra $50 to $100. It is what it is. But once you've done that, and it's a simple swap out, it's just a couple of screws, you know, all around. Once you've done it, it makes a world of difference. The only other concern area that I've got a lot of questions about regarding this guitar were the pickups. Being that this is the SC552, the second iteration of this inch, of this model, uh, they, they changed it up. So they used to use Roswell brand pickups. I never played through those. I can't compare them personally. I have no prior experience with Roswells. Sorry. Uh, they put Tesla brand in here. Tesla Opus Ones, I believe, is the name of the model. And... Uh, they sound decent. They do what they're supposed to do. They're adequate. 
nothing to write home about, but they're not terrible. They're just also not great. I mean, they're okay. That's my opinion. You know, take it for what it's worth. You know, also, it's a great mod platform, too. So for people that do want to upgrade and have the money to do so, feel free to do it. Go for it. But I think it's in keeping with the aesthetic and the vibe of, you know, a Gibson or a Les Paul, rather. I mean, it's a vintage instrument, or it was at one time. And uh, why not, you know, with a vintage instrument, put in vintage sounding, vintage feel pickups. It makes sense. So that's what they did. They're decent. Don't feel like if you buy this instrument, you're going to have to swap them out right away or ever. You really don't have to. They work just fine. But again, it's up to you, you know, if you want to spend the extra money. Now, I had been for a while considering uh, replacing them with bare knuckle Nollies pickups, the uh, Polymath set. You know, I might still do that in the future just for kicks, you know, and being that I'm on YouTube here, I'd like to review different gear. So maybe for that purpose alone, I might do it. But I mean, those are going to cost me another $300 plus, $350. So essentially, <laughs> doubling the price of this guitar just to add some different pickups. I mean, it doesn't really make financial sense, you know, and we'll see what the difference in sound is, but I might do that down the road. But I mean, if you're getting this guitar, don't feel like you need to replace them at all. They're fine. Um, yeah, not much else to really say about it. It's, it's just so well built. It's beautiful, in my opinion. I love this thing. You know, there's always going to be somebody out there. It's not a real Gibson or, you know, Epiphone's not even a real Gibson. Whatever, man. I don't care. I bought this specifically because I wanted to check out a single gut. It's the first one I've ever owned. And I didn't want to pay a lot of money to do so. You know, I just wanted to see what they're all about. It turns out I got really lucky. I got a great instrument. It feels great. It looks great. It sounds great. I have no complaints. And so, you know, if you're on the fence about it, don't be, man. It's it's wonderful instrument. You're really going to love it. So that's pretty much it for today, guys. Thanks for watching the video. And, uh, you know, like I said, if you have any questions or concerns regarding this guitar or any other gear that I discuss on the channel, please feel free to drop a comment question down below in the uh, in the old comment section and we'll uh, chat it up there. I love talking to you guys about this stuff and I try to get back to the questions. You know, I try to reply to your questions as soon as possible. I'm pretty good about that. If you got any value from this video, I hope you did. Please feel free to uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. It really helps out the channel. I really do appreciate all you people out there that do watch my videos and do engage with me. I really enjoy building this community and talking to you guys. And I hope to see you guys soon in the next one. Until then, I'm out of here. See ya!